What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. Our first story, read by Rosalind Chow, is about a motorcycle riding princess. Prince Swashbuckle didn't think Princess Smarty Pants was so smart. What does one do if an elephant says he's going to sneeze? Please, not a sneeze, cried the bear. Well, that's not fair, I declare. The, the last time he sneezed, he blew off all my hair. Our last story is about a very special friendship. The neighbors call them ham and eggs because they were always together. Mm -hmm. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. A riddle for you. You ready? Yes. Okay. What's green and flies? Green and flies. Yeah. Um, oh, I give up. <clears throat> Super pickle! <laughs> <laughs> One medium pepperoni pizza coming in! What? One medium pepperoni pizza coming in. No, I heard you. It's my new greeting. Who is it? It's me, Rosalind, and I'm not a medium pizza. And if I was, I wouldn't be pepperoni. Hi, Rosalind. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm so glad Rosalind's here. You know, she usually comes by with books even I don't know. Oh, well, maybe I better explain to her that calling her a pizza is a good thing, you know? <laughs> don't worry. I'm sure Rosalind understands. <sighs> Hi, Kino. Hi, Mara. Hi. Hi. I found this book, and I bet you anything you've never heard of it. Ooh. It's called Princess Smarty Pants. Do you know it? Princess Smarty Pants, huh? Is it the one by Babette Cole? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And here I was, thinking I was going to surprise you with a book you didn't know. Yeah, well, listen, I, I don't know it. I don't know it. Oh, and, uh... <sighs> Please forgive me for calling you a pepperoni pizza. <sighs> uh, oh. Oh. <sighs> <clears throat> will, will you please, please read it to me now, huh, huh, huh? Of course, but I only have a short while because I have to get back to work, okay? Oh, well, let's just start with this story and see how it goes from there, okay? Okay. <laughs> this is a story about a very special princess that I like very much named Princess Smarty Pants. Princess Smarty Pants did not want to get married. She enjoyed being a Miz. Because she was very pretty and rich, all the princes wanted her to be their missus. Princess Smarty Pants wanted to live in her castle with her pets and do exactly as she pleased. It's high time you smarten yourself up, said her mother, the queen. Stop messing about with those animals and find yourself a husband. Suitors were always turning up at the castle, making a nuisance of themselves. Right, declared Princess Smarty Pants. Whoever can accomplish the task I set will, as they say, win my hand. She asked Prince Compost to stop the slugs from eating her garden. She asked Prince Rushforth to feed her pets. She challenged Prince Pelvis to a roller disco marathon. She invited Prince Boneshaker for a cross-country ride on her motorbike. She called on Prince Vertigo to rescue her from her tower. She sent Prince Bashthumb to chop some firewood in the royal forest. <laughs> it's Bashthumb. <laughs> She suggested to Prince Fetlock that he might like to put her pony through its paces. She told Prince Grovel to take her mother, the queen, shopping. 
<laughs> she commanded Prince Swimbladder to retrieve her magic ring from the goldfish pond. Prince Swimbladder. <laughs> None of the princes could accomplish the task he was set. They all left in disgrace. That's that then, said Smarty Pants, thinking she was safe. Then Prince Swashbuckle turned up. He stalked the slugs eating her garden, fed her pets, roller disco until dawn, rode for miles on her motorbike. He rescued her from her tower. He found some firewood in the forest. He even tamed her horrid pony. Took her mother, the queen, shopping and retrieved her magic ring from the goldfish pond. Prince Swashbuckle didn't think Princess Smarty Pants was so smart. So she gave him a magic kiss. <laughs> and he turned into a gigantic, warty toad. Prince Swashbuckle left in a hurry. When the other princes heard what happened to Prince Swashbuckle, none of them wanted to marry Smarty Pants. So she lived happily ever after. <laughs> oh, that was a oh, great that was great. Story. <laughs> I like that. Good. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but Princess Smarty Pants just did not want to get married, did she? Well, that's the whole point. In the old days, the stories always ended with the prince and the princess living happily ever after. But the twist on this one is that Princess Smarty Pants didn't need a prince to be happy. Right. Yeah. Right, it pokes fun at those stories that have the princess always running out searching for Prince Charming. Princess Smarty Pants was happy without a prince. And there are some princesses that are happy with the prince. I guess it all depends. Yeah. Ooh, Kino. What huh? is that thing on your face? Huh? What is Where? it? Where? 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 Ooh, I I I think huh? it's a huh? Is it an anchovy? <gasps> An uh, anchovy? Oh, that's so gross. Where is it? Is it still there, Mara? Where is it? Is it on my hat? Is it on my nose? Uh, Check my nose. Um, Where is it? Well, is it my... it's, uh... <laughs> huh? What's she so funny? She tricked you. Huh? <laughs> she yes, tricked me? She did. Hey, there... where'd she go? Well, she's oh. gone, but there is no anchovy on your face. Oh, brother. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> of course. I should know by now. How would an anchovy get on my face? <sighs> <laughs> well, hello, Jim. <laughs> Hi, kids. Did you all meet outside? Yeah. Yes, we've been playing the animal game. May I play too? Oh, wait, wait, we're coming. Kino's going to be so happy when he finds out that we brought books with us today. You just wait and see. <laughs> see, see, what's the story, Jim, buddy? And what's this animal game you guys were playing? Well, I brought a, a, a book uh, about some animals from Africa. <gasps> you brought a book about animals? <laughs> oh, will you please, please, please read it for us? Sure. Uh, but anyway, that's the game we were playing. We were making all the sounds of all the animals, and this story is really about animals and their sounds, one big sound in particular. The book is called Stand Back, Said the Elephant, I'm Going to Sneeze. It's written by Patricia Thomas, and the pictures have been done by Wallace Tripp. Here we go. Stand back, said the elephant, I'm going to sneeze. Stand back, said the elephant, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> well, I hate to alarm you, uh, but I don't wish to harm you. My friends, I fear, uh, it's clear, uh, oh dear, you better stand back. I'm going to sneeze. Oh no, oh no, cried the buffalo. You're so big and strong, and your trunk is so long. Your sneezes send everyone flying along. <laughs> bumping and thumping down pathway and trail, bouncing and jouncing head over tail, tumbling and bumbling. Your sneeze is a gale or a hurricane. 
I hate to complain, but please, don't... Sneeze. Sneeze. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, please, you don't sneeze, cried the monkeys in the trees. You make such a breeze when you sneeze. Uh, the last time you blew us right out of the trees, the branches began to bend and to sway, and some of us landed so far away, we didn't get back until the next day. <laughs> oh, the leaves all went whirling and tumbling and swirling, and the flowers shook for hours the last time you sneezed. Even a cough would knock some of us off. Oh, please, don't sneeze. <laughs> With a shriek, the parrot opened his beak. Ah! The elephant says he's going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, elephant, please, cried the birds in the trees. The last time you sneezed, we lost every feather. We didn't know whether we'd ever get back together. <laughs> Every parakeet was bare as a sheet from his head to his feet. <laughs> What's more, all the whales had peacock's tails. <laughs> and the wings of the cockatoo were stuck on the kangaroo. You must confess it was quite a mess and very confusing and not too amusing. Even a snuffle makes our feathers ruffle. Oh, please, don't. Sneeze. <laughs> fly, fly, called the birds to the bees. The elephant says he's going to sneeze. Oh, no, buzzed the bees. Not a sneeze. Not a sneeze. Oh, the last time he blew off our stings as well as our wings. And we had to make do with rose thorns and glue. Furthermore, what a shock. We all had to walk on our knees. If you please. That's hard on bees' knees. While our wings grew back in, what a sin! Oh, please, don't sneeze! <laughs> beware, beware, called the bees to the bear. The elephant says he's going to sneeze. Oh, please, not a sneeze, cried the bear. Oh, that's not fair, I declare. The, the last time he sneezed, he blew off all my hair and left me so bare, I spent the whole winter in long underwear. Nothing so sad as a bear that is bare. <laughs> the poor giraffe, now don't laugh, almost bent in half, and the crocodile's snout was turned inside out. The last time he sneezed, <laughs> a sniff or a snuff is bad enough, but a sneeze? Oh, please. Don't sneeze. Oh. Uh, I don't suppose. You could uh, hold your nose uh, or wait a while, <laughs> asked the crocodile with a sad little smile. Oh, my, do try, said the fly. We wish, said the fish, you would if you could. The last time you blew off all our skins, from our heads to our tails, and our gills got the chills. Our skin is so thin. <laughs> if you do it again, we'll... Please, oh, please, don't sneeze. <laughs> the zebra yelled, yikes, <laughs> you blew up my stripes. Plus lots and lots of the leopard spots and all the snakes will be tied up in knots. The hippopotamus said, a lot of us will fall right on our bottomus <laughs> if you sneeze. So, uh, please, don't, don't sneeze. Well, I'm sorry, my friends, said the elephant sadly. About all this, I do feel badly. If I could keep from sneezing, I'd do it gladly. But I have such a twitch in my trunk and an itch, plus a bit of a tickle and even a prickle. You, you, you must run fly and hop. I'm afraid I can't stop. I would if I could, but there's nothing to do. Ah? Ah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! Shouted a little gray mouse, jumping out of his house. He stood right up on his little tiptoes, stuck out his tongue, and wiggled his nose. Ah! 
shouted the elephant, jumping up in the air. That's a mouse! That's a mouse standing there! Well, I, I must hide in a tree before he gets me or jump in the lake, for goodness sake. Oh, don't scare me, please! Spare me! The mouse laughed. Oh, Pooh, now what could I do? A little thing like me to a big thing like you? I only wanted to give you a scare, and it worked as sure as you're standing there. Elephant, think about it, please. You completely forgot to sneeze. Well, what do you know, cried the elephant. That's so. It's astounding, confounding. As I live and breathe, I don't think I really have to sneeze. And he began to giggle. <laughs> That's the funniest thing that has happened to me. Ha, 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 ho, ho, ho. The elephant shook from his head to his toe. He ho-hoed and ha-hawed. He giggled and <laughs> guffawed. He chortled and chuckled until his knees buckled. He sat down and rolled from side to side. In fact, the elephant laughed until he cried. He laughed till the ground was shivering and shaking. And all of the trees were quivering and quaking. The monkeys came tumbling out of the trees. Ah! And the stings fell off every one of the bees. <laughs> and the bird's feathers went flying to goodness knows where. Ah! And all of the hair fell off the bear. The giraffe bent in half. Ooh, look at him. And the crocodile snout. Ooh, turned inside out. Mm. The fish lost their scales from their heads to their tails. And the zebra yelled, yikes, let go my stripes, while the hippo went boom, right on his plump, you know whoop. <laughs> and into a puddle, the mouse went kerplop. Then he sat up and shouted, this simply must stop. We're terribly glad you don't have to sneeze. But if you must laugh, laugh softly. Oh, elephant, please. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that was terrific. That was great. Oh. Thank you. That was great. Do you, any of you remember when you had a big sneeze like the elephant almost had? <laughs> Did anything stop Achoo. you? Yeah. What stopped Christina. you? Christina. <laughs> Uh, something stopped you just a minute ago, didn't it? What was yours? Yeah. Um, I covered my nose and my <laughs> well, Did your hand just kind of blow up into a big balloon? There's something fascinating about telling stories with animals. What was so unusual? Was there a surprise in this story at all? What was? What surprise did you find, Loopy? That he didn't sneeze. That he didn't sneeze. How many of you thought he was going to sneeze? I thought sure he'd sneeze. I thought he was, yeah. too. I thought he was going to blow yeah. the whole forest away. Yeah. Did you think he was going to sneeze, Christina? What stopped him? The mouse. The mouse did, yeah. The mouse. Yeah. Say, say, everybody, you know, I have a riddle. Oh. A, a, an elephant riddle. You ready for it? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay. How do you know that there's an elephant in your refrigerator? How do you know there's an elephant in your refrigerator? Mm -hmm. I know. Oh. What do you I think? Know. He sneezes. <laughs> oh, no, I know. No, no, I know, no. I know. You what? know there is an elephant in your refrigerator because when you close the door, his tail and his trunk stick out. No, 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 no. You know that you have, you know that you have an elephant in your refrigerator because you can see his footprints in the pizza. Oh! <laughs> what a trickster. Hey, I brought another book with me. Well, okay. oh, wow. spit the secret out. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it is, it's a special secret. It's called A Special Trade by Sally Whitman. And the pictures are done by Karen Gundersheimer. Old Bartholomew is Nellie's neighbor. When Nellie was very small, he would take her every day for a walk down the block to Mrs. Pringle's vegetable garden. Bartholomew never pushed too fast. He always warned Nellie about Mr. Oliver's bumpy driveway. Hang on, Nell, here's a bump. And she'd shout, bump, as she rode over it. 
If they met a nice dog along the way, they'd stop and pet it. But if it was nasty, Bartholomew would shoo it away. Go on, go on. When Mrs. Pringle's sprinkler was on, he would say, get ready, get set, charge! Nellie would squeal, wee! as he pushed her through it. When Nellie began to walk, Bartholomew took her by the hand. No, no, she cried, pulling it back. Nellie didn't want any help. Bartholomew was getting older, too. He needed a walking stick. So they walked very slowly. When they walked upstairs, they both held on to the railing. The neighbors called them ham and eggs because they were always together, <laughs> even on Halloween. And on the coldest day of the winter, when everybody else was inside. One summer, Bartholomew taught Nellie to skate by circling his walking stick. Easy does it, he warned. Then she skated right over his toes. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't mad, though. He just whistled and rubbed his foot. Mm. The first time Nellie tried to skate by herself, she fell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Bartholomew saw she felt like crying. He pulled up something from the garden, and he said, Don't be saddish. Have a radish. <laughs> <laughs> Nellie laughed and ate it. She didn't really like radishes, but she did like Bartholomew. Before long, Nellie was in school, and Bartholomew had gotten even older. Sometimes he needed a helping hand, but he didn't like to take one. So Nellie held out her hand only when Bartholomew really needed it. Whenever Bartholomew had to stop and rest, Nellie would beg for a story about the good old days. Once after a story, she asked him, will we ever run out of things to talk about? If we do, said Bartholomew, we just won't say anything. Good friends can do that. Some days, they just took it easy and sat on the porch. Bartholomew would play a tune on his harmonica. Nellie would make up the words. One day, Bartholomew went out alone and fell down the stairs. An ambulance with a red flasher and a siren took him to the hospital. He was gone for a long time. Nellie wrote him every day. She always ended with, come back soon so we can go for walks again? She missed him. When Bartholomew came home, he was in a wheelchair. The smile was gone from his face, from his eyes. I guess our walks are over, he said. No, they aren't, said Nellie. I can take you for walks now. She knew just how to do it, too. Nice and easy, not too fast. <laughs> just before Mr. Oliver's driveway, she would call, get ready for the bump. And Bartholomew would wave his hat like a cowboy as he rode over it. <laughs> if they saw a nice dog, they'd stop and pet it. But if it was mean, Nellie would shoo it away. Shoo, shoo, shoo. One day, when the sprinkler was on, Nellie started to go around but she changed her mind. All right, Bartholomew, ready, set, one, two, three, charge! And she pushed him right through it. Oh, that was fun, said Bartholomew. Nellie grinned, I hope your wheelchair won't rust. <laughs> Fiddlesticks, he laughed. Who cares if it does? <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Pringle leaned over the fence. Seems like just yesterday, Bartholomew was pushing you in the stroller. That was when I was little, said Nellie. Now it's my turn to push, and Bartholomew's turn to sit. Kind of like a trade. Then they sat in the sun to dry. Nellie munched on a carrot. Bartholomew played a tune on his harmonica. Nellie could see the old smile was back in Bartholomew's eyes. Oh, boy, that was mm. a good story. Yes. That was great. What do you think of that one? Oh, I 
That makes you want to listen to stories all day, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was special? You know, this title says a special trade. What was special to you about this story? I Justin. Like that, um, story. that when he pushed her, then he, then she pushed him. Oh, kind of like a trade, huh? Is there a special person in your life that's older, Christina? My dad. My grandma's a real favorite of mine. We just get along great. Oh. And she bakes good cookies, too, doesn't she? You bet she? she does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Raisin yes. chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> My grandmother oh, used to, man. she made me pies, Kino. Pies, and she sang songs. After oh. Grandpa would finish with his songs, why, she'd just sit there and she'd play. And she'd just make music. And we wouldn't have any words, just the music. And sometimes we'd dance, and sometimes we'd tell stories, and sometimes we would just be nonsense, just have a lot of fun. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Now, I want to thank Jim oh. so much for coming by to see us and for bringing those books. Thank My you pleasure. very yeah. much, Jim. My pleasure. Thank you Jim, for having me. Will you me. come again sometime, Jim? I sure will, Kino. Great. Great. Well, Kino, do you have some books you'd like to recommend to our friends at home? I'll tell you what, Mara. Mm -hmm. I'll call them and you hold them, okay? <laughs> very good. Okay, another, another really nice story about friendship between young people and old people is Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge. <laughs> <laughs> and a story about a very smart princess is the paper bag princess. I like this book, too. Won't you come join us again next time for some more tasty stories? And until then, keep, keep a, a story, story in, in your heart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Today's storytime books are Princess Smarty Pants by Babette Cole. Stand back, said the elephant, I'm going to sneeze. Story by Patricia Thomas, pictures by Wallace Tripp. A Special Trade by Sally Whitman, pictures by Karen Gundersheimer. Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge, written by Men Fox, illustrated by Julie Bebas. And The Paperback Princess, story by Robert Munch, art by Michael Marchenko. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you and by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.